Now then, how's this work? Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, does that mean I have to read sideways? Hello, nitwit. And Raging Wool Shop, hello. Nilevs, I'm having to read this sideways because as you can see, I've got my uh, iPad set up on landscape. Oh, Barry, hello. <laughs> And Anna Met from Denmark. If I turn my head that way, it's because I'm, I'm having to read you. I don't know how the hell it works. <laughs> Are you seeing me in proper landscape view, or is it just my iPad? Do I look ninety five degrees wrong the wrong way? You're seeing me proper landscape. I'm. I look the right way up. Do I? <laughs> Good. Thank you very much, Amy. <laughs> That's really reassuring. Um, I'm in my temporary studio. If you um, watched anything that I've um, landscaped, fantastic. Thank you, Amy. Um, my knitting studio proper is being updated at the moment. My husband's renovating it for me. And um, so I'm squashed into the spare bedroom at the front of the house, which means that we have to put up with quite a lot of traffic noise because we're on the main road here. Uh, so if you hear lorries and buses and, and things passing, I apologise about that. Um, I've come on today to talk to you about stranded colour work, which I think is what I'm most well known for in my knitwear designs. Now, who have we got? Kay! Hello, Charlotte! Wonderful to see you. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> yes, I went out for a haircut. I, it was about time, wasn't it? I'm uh, at least two months too late with that haircut I think it was very very overdue <laughs> so I'm pleased I went and did that uh, prompted by this actually this afternoon I haven't put any lipstick on which is what the hairdresser suggested um, I've I've maintained my thing of still not wearing makeup but but no I am I had a haircut especially for the occasion me and uh, Sarah are going to be doing a, a broadcast tomorrow Sarah Alderson that um fellow designer, we're hosting a mystery knit along which starts tomorrow, the um, update goes out tomorrow morning, I think we're putting it out at 11am, uh, though I lack certainty about that, I'm not sure if she's replied to that post where I said yes, 11am, uh, and I'm going to her house tomorrow afternoon and we're going to record a periscope together to introduce the um, mystery knit along so yes yes my chair it's a, a little rocky ikea rocky chair it's good isn't it <laughs> it winked at you <laughs> very good it winks um now a lot of people have been posting we've got a group for the mystery knit along um for these fingerless mittens that we're going to some designs that we've it's um some designs that we've come up with together where there are interchangeable sections of the design so some designed by me some designed by Sarah and each week you get a part of the mitten and there's each week one designed by me one designed by Sarah though I think we're going to leave it as a mystery which one is which so you you might be able to guess which one is which who designed what but you never know you might not be able to guess um, there'll be that lovely little mystery element in there for you. In the group we set up on Ravelry for it, people have been um, posting pictures of the yarn that they are using for their fingerless mittens. And we made it clear that people need two colours and two contrasting colours for the knit along and lots of people their choices are beautiful it's wonderful to see the yarns that people are, are choosing and there's just a few that just judging from the photo that's been posted we're concerned that there isn't enough shade contrast between the two colours that have been chosen because no matter what options people choose in this mystery knit along there is going to be some stranded colour work at some point in the glove you can't avoid it altogether in these gloves stranded colour work so it's important to have some shade contrast now that's not talking about colour that's talking about shade um now blue and green are two different colours 
but if they're the same shade of blue and green as in not the tint but the shade how dark or how light they are the colors won't be distinct enough enough from each other for the pattern the standard color work pattern to show so i've set up on you can't see it yet because i've got to turn, turn the camera around and hopefully my ipad won't fall off the stand that i put it on to do this when i do that i've got to turn the camera around to show you i've set up um my ikea footstool that goes with this ikea chair i've set up that little footstool um with a few knits that i've got so because of course i have a vast library of stranded color work knits uh, just a few to show you a little bit about stranded color work in there who's that anna from sweden hello anna from sweden alpaca anna i think i've seen you before have you joined me in another broadcast I think I have seen you. That's a name I'm familiar with. I've seen you around somewhere. Um, well, welcome from Sweden. I'm sorry I don't know any Swedish at all, although I have had a go at um, Swedish twine knitting. Uh, a few years ago, I attended a workshop about twine knitting with Frailing Close. It was fantastic and I really enjoyed it because, of course, I love knitting. <laughs> and I will try anything in knitting because it's all fun yes it really is fun yes i really enjoyed it she had some great things on her uh, frailing and um, she showed us that it's traditional to do sleeves yeah like there'd be a, a garment that's the main garments um fabric a woven fabric but the the sleeves are done in um stranded color work now and you know you know charlotte you know Kay. excellent <laughs> that's wonderful anna i'm pleased you know Kay. So I don't know. Is there anybody I've not said hello to that's joined me? Um, yes, it's really interesting. The sleeves that, and she had a special pattern in the sleeves from the twine knitting using pearls, I think. Hi from Penil, Norway, somewhere in Norway. Hello, uh, Norwegian lady. I, I presume you're a lady. I don't know. You might have been a man. Uh, Tangled yarn says hi. Hello, Tangled yarn and Bella. Miami in Florida. Hello, pleased to see you there in Florida. Uh, I've never been to Florida, but my twin sister, Witchwood Lady, has, and uh, she loved it. She really enjoyed it. <laughs> it's a Danish lady in Norway, is it? Aha! <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, who's, who do we know that's Danish in Norway? Is it someone I know? I don't know. The whole world is in... Norway? <laughs> Denmark? <laughs> uh, Corregero, along the south coast of Norway. Along the south coast of Norway. Absolutely. Here, the whole world is here. Swim dolphins. Oh, you went, is that you, Mary, that said that? You went swimming with dolphins in Florida. Is that where those pictures were taken at some resort your wedding anniversary your 25th wedding anniversary wasn't it yes nature girl hello that was it yes that was uh, that's my twin sister everybody that's watching witchwood lady is my twin sister and um for her 25th wedding anniversary her and her husband went swimming in florida with dolphins they've got some fantastic photographs from that occasion so anyway, back to what I was saying, we're, we're here to talk about contrast, the importance of contrast in stranded colour work knitting. And on my stool in front of me, I've got some knits and I've also got, I found I have a collection of skeins of Titus. Titus is a yarn produced by Baram U, which is a yarn shop in Leeds in West Yorkshire. And um, a lot of people in the knit along um, have a connection with that shop uh, and are using Titus yarns that I've either bordered them specially or they um, are using Titus that they've got in their stash. I know Mary's using Titus. She bought some when we were there just last week. Um, two new shades that they've got rhubarb and Lotherton, I think the other one's called Lotherton and rhubarb are the shades that Mary's got a lovely blue and a lovely pink, um, which are fine. There was enough shade contrast between those. Here we go. Some standard colour work for you. Oh, thank you very much, Bella. <laughs> now, on the left hand side, we've got a great British knit. Yeah, I'm working on a design with those sheep at the moment, actually. I'm looking forward to publishing that in maybe a, a, a couple of months' time. 
Um, in the centre, we've got some skeins of Titus, and then over to the right hand side, we've got my design, um, Lissawin. So, what I want to talk to you about is contrast, shade contrast. Um, down here, can you see my hearts? Can you see this line here? Um, this is a dark green line. The colour's not showing perfectly well on screen. It's a lot brighter, more vivid uh, in real life than it looks on my screen here. So I don't know how it looks to you. But can you see this like purpley blue at the top of this heart? That purpley blue is quite close in shade to this dark green at the background. And if I stand back here... Yeah. No, they're standing out a lot better there than they do in real life. My hearts stand out on an iPad camera. Although it can see here, where is it? This one, can you see the bottom of that heart kind of disappears? You can't see the points at the bottom very well. That's because there's not enough shade contrast between the background dark colour and the purpley blue colour. So even though one's a green, and one's a purpley blue, they're about the same depth of shade. So one's not light enough or dark enough. They're both relatively mid-toned. And because of that, when you use those colours together, the pattern, the standard colour work pattern, doesn't stand out very well. The difference between fair round knitting and stranded knitting, someone asked me to talk about. Yes, this, this is a fair isle design. Um, because there are frequent changes of colour through the design so, and these are traditional these motifs that I've used in this are traditional motifs from Fair Isle uh, in um, the Shetland Islands so that's a, a Fair Isle design uh, but stranded colour work just means any colour work pattern in which um, the pattern is the, a motif pattern is produced or any pattern a pattern is produced by stranding the yarn behind the work and there are different traditions of stranded colour work around the world so Latvia and Estonia have their traditions of stranded colour work Norway uh, this frequent use of change of colour is traditional for Fair Isle but not for Norway Scandinavian uh, Norwegian style knits typically would use two colours throughout the garment Someone said that Fair Isle never has more than three stitches in one colour. That's nonsense. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's absolute nonsense. Lots of the patterns do. Look here, the bottom of here, this petal here, there are five stitches in one colour there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not the case. Um, most patterns, they will have le nine or less in one colour before colour changes. They would have nine or less. So that... Um, you don't have to trap the yarn in behind the um, knitting. They would uh, attempt to make it easier so that they're not having to trap yarn. But other than that, no. The, um, you can have quite long runs of colour. Up to nine stitches is um, very common. Right, so that's my Fair Isle Jumper Lissawin. Did I make the point well enough about how this yarn tends to disappear against the background, which is the similar in shade? That was the point that I'm really here to make, how important it is to get a decent level of shade contrast between two colours in stranded colour work. I'm coming over here to show you on this one, it's less obvious here. Um, can you see this band here in my thistles? That band is a green on a blue background. But because the green and the blue, there's not a lot of shade contrast between them. They're both relatively mid-toned. Well, the, the medium to dark, but they're both medium to dark colours instead of one being light and one being medium or one being medium and one being dark. Because they're both relatively close in shade, the pattern doesn't stand out very well. Thank you, Mary. Everybody loves the sheep and they're coming soon. I've, I've told them earlier I'm working on a design in those sheep again another one because we've already got this and we've got a cushion thank you very much Bella that's very kind of you to say so now I've put together a few skeins just let me sit down I've put together a few skeins in the center here uh, so that we can talk about contrast just looking at the bare yarn 
so at the random here let's sort them out to work out which ones are dark well obviously this one's nearly black it's called coal in baramutitis that's dark isn't it we're going to put next to it echo which is also dark and bantam which is also dark three different colors but very close in shade they're all dark so if we use those together in a stranded color work pattern then the actual design the, the motifs the the pattern <coughs> wouldn't stand out very well it will be difficult to discern the um, pattern that is being knitted uh, especially if it's a pattern which is composed of uh, very small areas of colour uh, where there are single stitches in one colour one or two stitches and then colour changes now yes it is difficult to see in the skeins uh, I read a tip a few years ago which works really well that um, if you, and most people nowadays would have a phone with them, a smartphone. If you take a photograph of the skeins together and then it, do some editing on it, just edit the photo on your phone, desaturate it, take it to a black and white photo. And when you're looking at it as a black and white photo, you'll be able to see if there's enough shade contrast between the colours. So do they look like they're basically the same grey or is one clearly a far lighter grey than the other grey? It does work really well. I've done that a few times myself if I've been unsure. And I've had accidents, as you've just seen, that um, I've regretted. Ever since doing this, I've regretted that shade contrast there not being good enough. Right, so there we've got our three dark shades. And then let's put some... Um, these are, I would say, these two in the centre there, there fairly mid-toned so either of those because these ones are dark and these are mid-toned there's enough shade contrast to use those together look at that that red and green would be gorgeous together and uh, I love these colours together these are opposite each other on the colour wheel that's why they work so well together um, this um, tealy turquoise which is echo with this orangey terracotta colour which is um, Parkin. Parkin's a, a wonderful cake type tea bread thing that we have in Yorkshire. It's a, a wonderful Yorkshire thing is Parkin, uh, um, especially used around bonfire night. People eat Parkin around bonfire night time, that time of year, autumn. So there we are. So that's um, Eckup and Parkin. They work really well together. Uh, this is quite nice together as well echo up and air uh, although air's a blue it's got a little bit of a greenish colour in it and so it works well with the echo which is a, another blue green so what you've got there is what we call a monotone scheme one dark and one light, light shade of the same tint the same colour so that works really well together and the other thing is, of course, we've got a neutral. Now, this is a pale neutral. I've forgotten what this... This might be stone in Titus. It might be stone, or it might even be one of the original shades that they don't do anymore. I think it's called stone. So, because this is a pale neutral, a pale neutral will work with any dark or mid-tone. Neutrals work with anything, so we could use that with the coals. That would work well together. They'd be nice together. It would work well with the the echo the turquoise colour can you see it would even you could possibly even get away with it with the air can you see I think the air is probably just enough darker to work with that colour as a contrast though I would want to see a black and white photo of it to be really certain of what I'm saying there it will work with the parking can you see because it's a neutral it's not a colour as such it's a combination of lots of colours so it would work with the parking and this neutral would work this i love this combination bantam that's the red let's move that to the other side so you can see the colour in the light more bantam and uh, this uh, creamy brown colour stone that works really well together doesn't it that's beautiful and it works with the green as well 
So all of them work because that's a neutral colour. So this will work with any of them. But the others, really, we have to be careful about the combinations. Mid shades. These two are relatively medium shades. And although they look nice together, I would want to see those in black and white to be sure. I think possibly the green is enough lighter than the Bantam for it to work, but I'm not certain. Um, so then mid-tone, these two together, although they look beautiful together, I wouldn't recommend using those together. I think the pattern would be lost. It would be difficult. You'd be able to see it close up, but anyone at any distance, you know, more than a, a couple of feet away, and you're going to begin to struggle to see the pattern when you've got two colours that are together, together that are both dark. And the same with colours together that are, are both light. Um, although I'm struggling to find an example here because I haven't got two very light colours. You see, I think that in that, the the stone is still significantly lighter than the air, enough for that to work. Um, so I can't show you some light colours together. So that's it, me talking about contrast in colour work. There's another thing that I want to talk about. I haven't got an example of when this goes wrong to show you. This is my hedgerow cardigan. This is my most popular colour work design of everything I've, I've done. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Um, the this is a traditional fair isle um, I was asked earlier about what makes something fair isle um, and there is actually a move at the moment some people saying that they would like to make it that fair isle truly has to come from fair isle so um, I would have to say that this cardigan is not a fair isle because in fact it was designed and knitted in Yorkshire uh, so this cardigan is in fact in the Fair Isle style but it is not a true Fair Isle because it wasn't designed and made in Fair Isle. Uh, however we'll call it Fair Isle for today and hope that the Fair Isle police don't come and get me. Um, Fair Isle is composed of bands or at least this type of Fair Isle, most Fair Isle is composed of bands of colour work, motif bands in horizontal stripes I've got them here and the colour changes through the motif band and um, between the motif bands so that you can have it work this way that we go from a dark band to a light band and the change from dark to light is carried by a border band in between. Um, the thing that I want to talk about about colour in this in particular in shade contrast is it's really important in a motif band that all the background colours are at one end of the spe shade spectrum whilst all the foreground colours are at the other end of the shade spectrum. So in this band all the background colours are darker than all the foreground colours which makes the motif stand out. We can see the motif because all the dark background colours are dark colours and all the foreground colours are light colours in that band. Here we've got it vice versa. All the background colours are light in this band and all the foreground colours are dark in this band. So we can discern the motif, we can pick it out, we can see it very easily. If during, for example, this motif band in which the foreground colours are dark, if in that motif band this background colour was dark it would be more difficult to see that because there wouldn't be enough shade contrast between the flower and its background colour and if let's find an example down here in this one we've got dark background colours and light foreground colours if they were swapped around in the centre of the band so we started with light foreground colour and dark background colour but then we switched to, to a light background colour and a dark foreground colour if we swapped it that way we wouldn't be able to see the motif at all it would disappear it would be too confusing for our brains to be able to work out the motif because there's an, there would be an inconsistency happening in the middle of the band with the way that the colour works uh, 
Do you need me to repeat that? It's quite a complicated idea and I've seen this mistake made on a number of occasions, including with this particular design, that sometimes people, um, without realising what they're doing, they swap the shade contrast in the centre of a motif band and consequently they lose the motif. It's impossible to see, to discern the motif because they've switched from dark to light background colour and from light to dark background colour, uh, foreground colour, from light to dark foreground colour in the middle of one single motif band and then they lose the motif. It's a really important key principle to learn. Now I think there's an article at my website about using colour in colour work where you could go and read that article, it'll be um, either on my blog or in my tutorial section, I'm not sure which, where I've explained the things that I've been talking about here today. And unfortunately, I'm just looking at the clock, shall we turn this around so that I can, do you mind saying goodbye to my knitwear, bye bye thistles in which the leaves disappear halfway through, bye bye hearts that haven't got very pointy bottoms <laughs> and bye bye beautiful hedgerow 